give you the broader view of how to look at data. For me, the most important thing is not to find a solution, is to find the problem. Yeah, you know, what is the right problem to solve? And I think data helps us a lot in doing that. So you have to understand we are not a business and they are not like consumers. We are a part of the society. I think if we do good, they respond uh, and so on and so forth. brand new episode of icons behind brands video interview series back to basics in the time of uncertainty where we are going to have a conversation with some of the leading minds in business and today we have with us mr gaurav mehta who is a chief marketing officer at girnar soft the largest auto tech group in india with brands like car dekho dot com gaadi jig wheels bike dekho and auto dot com an analytics and research driven marketer with 19 years of work experience which includes 13 years as a leading digital business expert worked with companies like yahoo and ol he was also facilitated with the marketer of the year award at exchange for media and power profile by linkedin and he was recognized as 40 under 40 by exchange for media group in the year 2018 and 19 a very warm welcome to you gaurav thanks so much devina i hope you're doing well i'm doing very well gaurav i want you to talk about one of the most important part of marketing which is brand messaging how one should ensure that the messaging is going right to the target audience and what one should keep in mind so that it resonates well to the target customer of today's time so brand messaging is an extremely uh, what called diverse and a very rich topic of discussion there we have all of us like to hear good stories all of us uh, have been brought up on stories told by our grandparents mother father we have read stories while growing up and you know stories have a big impact on how we perceive things how we perceive the reality to be and and, uh, and uh, as as brand uh, we have to establish the same connect uh, or perception through storytelling through narrative building and so on and so forth But, so, but storytelling is, or uh, brand uh, messaging is not just about uh, writing an ad copy and, and going forward and making an ad out of it. Our perceptions on how we actually consume stories are, uh, are shaped by a lot of factors. It's anthropology, it's psychology, it's the way we are brought up in the uh, in the households that we've been brought up, uh, the the status of our country. I mean, there's so many things that actually impact the way we perceive stories. Like with pandemic, I mean, you know, certain kind of storytelling just went out of the uh, window because people didn't want to, like, say, watch slapstick, slapstick, or hard-selling stories and narratives and brand messaging. And all of a sudden, much more empathetic storytelling, uh, brand messaging came uh, into play. So, so storytelling is not just like what is it that I want to tell you. It's more how are the perceptions uh, shaping in the mind of the consumers and what are the factors. So, so I think that's that's where uh, uh, brand messaging needs to learn from. There's so many different fields. uh I'll, i'll give you a quick example like like behavioral economics that's that's like a a, a subject that i want uh, i'm very uh, partial to i'm very biased towards it um behavioral economics talks about the irrationality of decision making in the human mind and um how can you actually tweak your messaging while saying the same same thing I can make it much more effective from brand's perspective one of the theories of behavioral economics is that we as human beings are averse to losses Uh, what it means is that if I were to tell you that hey, baby, now there's a chance that you can make ten rupees, or uh, there's a chance that uh, I'm making in one box if you put your hand, you'll get ten rupees, and one box if you put your hand, you will lose ten rupees. Uh, would you go and play that game? Then more often than not, people would say I'm not going to play that game because I don't want to lose what I already have. So, like insurance sector uses this theory beautifully in in their brand messaging, rather than saying that you know insure your loved ones. Uh, and feel happy. Uh, they might actually feel uh, play on the loss aversion theories and say, if you don't insure yourself after you're gone, uh, your family will might just suffer. So you don't want the losses to accrue on account of your family, for them, and so on and so. Which is why 
it elicits a bigger response. Both were the same message to buy insurance. Uh, if you look at it, they've been a uh, politicians are not the subject matter experts. Subject matter experts are the bureaucrats or people working in the ministries and so on and so forth. Politicians' job is to sell those policies to the people, and, and that's what messaging uh, does for them. Uh, then why should we actually, as a country, do this? Why should we, as a state, do this? And so on and so forth. And uh, maybe the biggest job of a politician is to sell the policies that the government makes uh, or the bureaucrats make. That's, that's the main job. They do it through messaging or, or brand messaging, if I would say, and narrative building. So, so that's how I look at uh, uh, brand messaging and the kind of disciplines it can borrow from and learn from. And I think it's a great example. Great messaging happens through right storytelling. So moving on, uh, what is the biggest challenge you and your team has faced in last one and a half years? And what did you learn from so, it? So being a marketer, I mean, it's one of the most dynamic business functions in the world. I mean, it just keeps on changing so rapidly. Technology has a big part to play. Offline and online channels, the only channel uh, strategies have a lot of part, uh, a big part to play. Media. There's so many things that as a marketer you have to understand and carry together. Yes, so marketing is by far maybe the most dynamic business function uh, in the world, and that kind of held us in good stead as pandemic struck the country and the world. Because inherently, fundamentally, a marketer needs to change very very rapidly, needs to upscale very very rapidly. Yeah, so so if you're not upscaling yourself every year, every six months, uh, then you're not going to be a good marketer. And uh, I think my team was always attuned to making sure that like every six months or every one year, how do you make your skill sets redundant and how you do how do you keep on adding more things to it? So because of this training, uh, when pandemic struck, obviously it was a new world altogether. You know, uh, your media habits changed, people's. Uh, mental status changed. I mean, like how they were looking at the world all of a sudden, from optimistic to extremely pessimistic, not knowing what's going to happen, and so on and so forth. So a lot of things changed. Even consumption, like April of 2020, in the history of this country, where not a single automobile was sold, not a single one, literally. So from like you know selling say three lakh cars per month, or 15 lakh uh, bikes per month, or uh, three and a half lakh used cars per month in the country, it all went to zero. The, the industry went through a tough turmoil, I'm like, you know, a huge, huge churning. So these were challenges that we hadn't faced. But but like Ami said, says, I'm like a person who sweats in peace, doesn't bleed in war. Uh, so I think because we were always constantly upscaling ourselves and keeping consumers at the center of whatever we were doing, we were able to understand that this is not the time for hard selling. This is not the time for a certain kind of narrative that we spoke about when you asked me the first question. And then we started communicating to make sure that as a brand, we were contributing to the mental well-being of the consumers. We were actually educating uh, the advantages of personal mobility. Uh, so that's a safe and trusted mode of transportation uh, as and when uh, the lockdown was opened. I think last May, somebody had asked me this question, how do they look at uh, the impact on automobile? Obviously, those are the darkest days. I just told you about the April numbers. And I said, Keith, for the next two, three months, it's going to be fairly dicey. Uh, automobile is a huge sector and it's been badly hit. Uh, but in the medium to long term, I think it's going to be great for personal mobility, where people will buy more uh, used cars uh, and so on and so forth, uh, new, new cars and two-wheelers to make sure that they have at least one trusted mode of transportation. And we made sure as a team that we were working towards answering all the queries of the consumers as and when they started searching again which is the right car for me which car gives the best mileage i'm like you know, how do i buy a great used car uh, how do i sell a used car and get the best price for it um, so those were things so we started doing a lot of content initiatives uh, we started making a lot of product changes that digitized a lot of offline touch point to digital to make sure that people were not getting out of home and we were serving them through digital mediums. So a lot of work was done, uh, but just because of uh, a marketer's inherent fundamental advantage that they have to constantly upscale themselves. Uh, when pandemic came, it was just like kicking that training into action and learning newer skills and understanding what the consumers might be thinking. How did you use content marketing to keep up the conversation with your customer and what are the key points you kept in mind all along? So Devina, we as a business or we as the largest auto tech company in the group, I mean, if we have to look at like why we are there, one of the largest reasons for us to be the largest auto tech com uh, group in the country is because we are a publisher. Uh, we are in the business of creating our own content, like a, a very, very well qualified uh, large team of automobile journalists who drive test all cars, bikes in the country and then they write their verdicts on it. They help people choose uh, through content which is the right bike or car for them. So inherently we've known the power of content, uh, what it does for our consumers and in turn for us. 
how does it add value for them and in turn adds value for us i'm like our, our business is because of content but but maybe your question is more towards branded content once you understand that like content can actually be uh delivering great value to the consumer on which you can commercialize as a business then they you have a large amount of confidence even in going in uh, branded content i mean like you know once you establish that connect with the consumer as a brand by adding value then then that that consumer whenever he or she is transacting will maybe prefer you more than the others so like last year when the pandemic struck 15 days later 20 days later after that uh, in the lockdown we had this uh, content branded content series by a very uh, uh, noted uh, poet author called vinit panchi um and the uh, is a 10 video series that is called zindagi ki gaadi chalti rehni chahiye oh. where we were just doing i'm like you know as as a brand we knew i'm like that we are a part of the society and we have to equally help people to rise above what we were going through at that time and these were like motivational light hearted so that and then these were going viral over whatsapp and we didn't spend any media money and people were just sharing it left right and center later on i think i mean once we were getting out of pandemic and people were much more say um, assertive And, and positive in their mind. I'm like you know around uh, Independence Day we uh, had like a branded content which was about the Asal Uttar uh, battlefield of 1965, uh, where uh, Paramvir Chakra Vijayta uh, Abdul Hamid he single-handedly I think uh, demolished almost eight patent tanks over this jeep. We told that story, and I think uh, the whole thing was that every used car or every car has a lot of value provided it has a great person uh, behind the wheels. and that's what we took to the uh sent the consumers and and they loved it um even our advertising our, our mass media campaigns i'm like you know we have a number of uh very trusted brand ambassadors like rahul dravid uh akshay kumar uh, mahesh babu and i think if you would have seen the ads that we came out in november last year they were all about like how do we actually get back as a nation on our feet they were not about i'm like why we were wanting people to sell their used cars to us and but the narrative was more like ki, hey i'm like as a nation we can get through it and we have to help people uh and used car was at the center of it was the protagonist and i think the last branded content that we did which has done maybe the best um uh, they believe now we stand for personal mobility uh personal mobility is like you know you having your own mode of transportation and being able to go from a point to b for whatever for education for work for leisure for entertainment for i don't know i mean everything but personal mobility is what we champion uh last year uh while just like talking with the team and our agency i'm like you know one of the people just said that because of the pandemic uh people are not taking uh, cabs and train uh, metros that much buses because of security reasons trust and security reasons and uh, so so people are driving their own cars and so on and so forth what you also spoke about like in you know, a used car is like going through up and we saw that not predict that in last year may uh but uh, our elderly uh members of the family about 60 65 all of a sudden they have to drive on their own and with age your uh, eyesight your strength in the arms your hearing abilities everything just reduces a little bit and our indian roads can be a bit chaotic and uh, we understood that it was like becoming very hard while they were driving out on the road after a long time or they started driving much more and we said why can't we have a very simple solution to make people understand that there's an elderly car uh, driver behind the wheels so don't honk too much give them the space i'm like even if they're driving slowly just i mean like you know it's okay uh because when we see like a learner's license ka l on a car or we see an ambulance in a rear view mirror all of us like you know just just be a little bit more cautious and we give space for the we see a fire brigade we see a police car we all give them like you know no you're the first right and so so we had a very simple solution you can't give a very convoluted solution to a problem we said just put up an e sticker on the car and if there's an e sticker just understand there's an elderly driver and once you get that cue which is already encoded in our uh, decision making abilities because you see l you see any other sign you just give them the now just make another sign called e put it up on the car and then because of the inherent respect we have to our elders that should be reflecting on the roads also and that is something we launched in april of this year if i'm not wrong and it just went phenomenally viral again we didn't spend a single media uh, rupee on it it just the strength of the idea and people just responded to it we had so many people who were like you know sending their videos of them putting e on their grandmother's car or their father's cars and 9 year old girls some they putting on their grandmother's car ki hey she is going to be traveling so let me put it up so i think branded content uh and then we saw our business improving because of that people were searching more for car deco our traffic surged and all that so i think you have to understand we are not a business and they are not like consumers we are a part of the society i think if we do good 
their response, uh, and so on and so forth. So all of us like add value to each other, and branded content played a big part during the last twelve months. And, and as you said, as a brand, we are contributing to the well-being of customers' mind as well as their lifestyle. And that particular ad campaign, the e elderly ad campaign, was a shift and a realization in me as well. I have written about it in my social media. I have shared it with my parents. That was a great piece of content, I must say. So marketing segment look very fascinating from outside, and we also understand there are a lot of responsibilities also associated with that. What is the toughest part of being a brand marketer? So as a marketer. And I've been maybe a CMO for almost nine years now. First at OLX and now at Cardeco. I think the moment you realize that look it, it, on any company's uh, uh, books, the two biggest costs are either people or marketing, and these are two biggest costs. So I'm like, if you're a CMO, uh, you are ha- you are responsible for one of the two largest cost sent uh, items on any company's books. I think uh, once a you realize the responsibility that it brings. And B, the power that it brings. I'm thinking you know, that you can actually. For me, marketing is nothing but an investment in future growth of a company. For me, marketing is actually incubating the future earning potential of a company. What you'll do today is going to impact you today also, but then it's also going to make you relevant two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years down the line also. So once you understand, and once this is how you look at marketing, and not just like that, I have to add to launch, I have to get more users to the site, and all that kind of stuff. Then, then the whole penny just drops. Ki you are responsible not just for like say top line, but you're looking at the bottom line also. So I think one of the toughest things is to make people understand because you know the decision while while you're responsible for executing and a lot of like decision making, but then the entire organization needs to understand what you're doing. Your CFO needs to like you know back you on the budgets that you are uh, investing. Your CEO, your board, I mean like you know uh, need to like you know be to to have like trust even if like you know something doesn't work to give you a longer rope. Yeah. Uh, The entire organization should live and breathe the brand value. So, and and otherwise, I'm like you know, marketing is not just about like you putting some fancy ad on the TV and so on and so forth. But the entire workforce, the stakeholders of your company, also are delivering the same value. If you have a franchisee and franchisee is not delivering what you as a brand want to do, then then that's where the brand experience just goes down. But you're controlling the uncontrollables. There is this omni-channel uh, media. I'm like you know, there's so many things where you don't on on TV you advertise, and a lot of times people say we don't know if it works and all. Yeah, but because the reach is so big, we have to continue to advertise on digital. Things keep on changing all the time. And now the thing is, in the next six to eight months, there is going to be cookie-less future. So you have to like almost as a digital marketer also like relearn new techniques. And there's so much of like digitization of not just like marketing processes, but the entire go-to-market process. Ah, uh, be it like the call center, CRM, CLM, and all these things. So you as a marketer are constantly upscaling, upscaling yourself. And how do you make sure that your team is understanding it as well as you? Ah, uh, so there's a constant amount of training. And, and talking that you need to do, and uh, to justify why you are investing so much, why are you uh, shape shifting, or why are you changing your strategies, uh, is something uh, that can be fairly, fairly tough at some point of time. Uh, but then that's the only way you can be relevant as a good marketer. Uh, marketing is not just about spending money on media; it's a growth function. This is maybe the most critical function of any business. Uh, That we can look at. Uh, otherwise, you won't have like you know super established Fortune hundred brands still continue to invest in marketing. They know that marketing is the one that shapes consumer behaviors and keeps the future earning potential of a company really robust. So to justify that responsibility and to make sure that you are ethically, functionally, absolutely robust while uh, investing that money uh, is is just something that keeps you humble. And I think that's that's uh, something that every marketer should be looking at. I think you rightly mentioned marketing is one of the crucial part, one of the very important part of any organization, which contributes toward the current and future earning potential of organization, which itself is a huge power and responsibility. So you have worked with multiple app-based companies like. Yahoo, OLX, Car Deco, Gari. dot com, Jig Wheels, where you get a lot of data points. So, would you like to share some tips or suggestions to the companies, to the marketers who are also in the same line of app-based companies? So, Devi, I can be super technical in my answer, and that's maybe the wrong approach because I'm like, you know, we have limited time, and I don't think uh, I can. Give like a really all the information which is from a technical side. I'm like, you know, how to look at data. So let me just give you the broader 
view of how to look at data. For me, the most important thing is not to find a solution, is to find the problem. Yeah, what is the right problem to solve? And I think data helps us a lot in doing that. Uh, if you have the right data stored well, which can be extracted also fairly, fairly quickly, then you can do a number of like, you know, runs on that and like, you know, find like, you know, what's my business doing? Are my new users lesser? When a new user comes in this category, does he or she spend lesser time? Do they spend more on any, any other category? There can be so many questions that you can actually firm up with the use of data. So I think data for me is just the best way to validate your right questions. Because what happens, Devlina, a lot of times is you have a lot of legacy, you have a lot of like domain experience. But as we saw like last year, the, the last year was a great example of how the situations change and the problems also change there. Uh, the, the way they are. But if you are still thinking like, you know, I'll continue to do that, then your solutions are going to be totally 180 degree away from that. Yes. So I think data, what it does for us is that it A, tells us what the consumers are doing on the uh, platform. Where are they finding a lot of value? Where are they not finding a lot of value? And the entire intention is to make sure that we find out where they are not getting enough value from us. And two, then make solutions accordingly. So data, I, mean, I had a very interesting conversation when I was at OLX with one of my agency partners from the creative team. And uh, they used to hear me talking about a lot of data, data, data and all that. And like, yeah, what are you doing? I'm going to be a creative folks. And he's maybe one of the people who's created the best advertising campaigns for OLX when I was uh, the chief marketing officer at OLX. And, uh, and to his credit, he was absolutely open. So he didn't ask this question as countering me, but out of curiosity. He, why, why do you talk about so much of data? I'm like, data is as, helps you be much more creative. I mean, like, you know, when I give you the right problem to solve, then you can be as creative as you want to because I know you'll be looking at the right problem. A lot of times, because of our biases, because of our work experience that we have spent like 15, 20 years in an industry, we think we know it all, but we don't know it all. And data keeps us humble because data keeps on telling us newer stories every day. The more you define your problems with data, the better your problem statements are. And I think for me, data is that. It tells you which direction to go in. And I think that's, that's the broader answer. Uh, of how I look at data and how everybody should look at data. Uh, so I'm just moving to a very interesting section now, rapid fire round, where you have to answer in just one word. One brand which you admire the most other than your own. Oberoi Hotels. Oh. One book or podcast you would like to recommend to the marketers. The Power of Habit, the book. One of your hidden talent. I'm a trained horse rider. One thing about you that surprises people. Maybe my hidden talent again. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say, your previous answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would say that. One of your biggest professional mentor. I, I don't think I can give a one word answer over here. And leadership for you? Our responsibility. So we are just coming out of the rapid fire round now. Your message to the aspiring brand managers, marketeers? First thing is just like really, really define what is it that you and your business are adding value in. A lot of times I'm like, you might say I'm a jewelry brand, I'm in the fashion space, I'm like a tire brand, I'm doing this and all. Just, just understand how do you differentiate yourself. Um, because that's super, super crucial. The second thing is be very uh, focused on how your costs are. Uh, do a unit economics, even when you don't have a business that's starting to uh, scale up. Because only by being unit economic focused can you have a sustained, scalable growth. A lot of times people just leave it till the time ki abhi baad mein a type of a thing. But then unit economics is something that should be done fundamentally at the get go. Uh, invest in people. Uh, if you have uh, the resources, always, always invest in people, not just invest in hiring people, but then invest in people, uh, scale them up. I think that's your biggest asset and uh, use data. I mean, like data, it's, it, you don't need to be Aryabhat or a genius to use data wisely. Um, I think if you're curious, if you are like always asking good questions, then data is going to be your best friend. So how much you can dig into data, how much can you learn from data, how much can you define your problem through data will make your job super easy. So I think uh, these three, four things are my Devli now, I would say. That, uh, that were really, uh, I mean, insightful, uh, Gaurav. I mean, personally, that is going to help me. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all your valuable insights with us. It is going to add a lot of value to the video series and to the viewers uh, at the end. And uh, we are so happy that, I mean, you came, you share your insights. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Devlin. You've been very kind. And, you know, you, you shared our E for Elderly, which is also something I would like to thank you for. I think it's it's, a, it's an initiative all of us should be uh, sharing. And I think you did it. So thank you. And, and thanks for a great conversation. I think uh, answers are only as good as good questions. So I think thank you for asking those great questions.